Let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. This will be the January 8, 2013 board meeting of the Mose Lake Irrigation and Rehabilitation District. The lake elevation as of uh, this evening, I think we have it here somewhere. We'll go ahead and dig it out of there. Did you have it there? Yeah. Uh, 1042. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The old minutes need to be addressed with the rich archers still here. I mean, they haven't been adopted yet. Jerry, we it's don't have any old minutes no, yet. They still, still haven't been done. completed. Uh, we're ten months. Idea. We're ten months out. We have nothing to look back on. Well, that's what I understand. But when they're adopted, they need to be in that, in that process. We need to have Rich Archer here because he was on the board at that time. Well, uh, there's, there's just a few items here that uh, Rich is familiar with, and I want to get them taken care of a little shortly. But it's a very short. Well, very short I, I am unable, uh, just reading through the statutes, to find anything that talks about post organization district elections and when the uh, successor takes office. Um, so it would require additional research. Answers to the assessment in writing uh, brought up tonight. Well, uh, well first of all, I uh, mean, let me finish. Uh, you uh, gave us that you were going to try and have this done by Thanksgiving. I sure did try, and I've spent uh, many, many, many hours addressing public records, public meetings, and other issues. Yeah. Well, I, and it's just exhausted the time available I've had to do that. Secondly, this board, in my absence, adopted an assessment uh, uh, based on the methodology that's being questioned by the auditor. So uh, unless the board were to reverse that decision, um, it, it's my, there's not really, in my view, any rush at all to complete the research because the, the horse is already out of the barn. Next item on the transfer of 275000 the purchase of rental home property from the 2000 12 budget to the 2013 budget. Uh, this is money that has been set aside in the 2012 budget, and uh, rather than just see it go back into the general fund, I would like to see that moved uh, into the 2013 and earmarked with that label on it. Uh, Rich, is that something that you can? Well, you know, I'll make the motion if you like. <coughs> Wrong. I, I will make the motion that we transfer the 275 from the 2012 budget to the 2013, leaving it earmarked for the purchase of the Frank Holmes property. Okay, in my opinion, I think Frank Holmes property would be a good investment for the irrigation district. And, uh, and I think if we move that money from 2012 to 2013, probably is a smart idea. Um, they can the new directors when they get this thing in there. If it's something they want to change, they can do that at the next meeting or whenever. So, um, that being said, um, I need a second. I would second that motion. Okay. Uh, the mo motion's been moved and seconded that we transfer the uh, two hundred and seventy-five thousand from the two thousand twelve budget to the two thousand thirteen, leaving an earmark for that purpose. Further discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Is, is somebody keeping notes? Uh, have you appointed a secretary to, no, to we're keep we're notes? We're recording. Uh, that's all I can tell you is we're going on the same system we've had for half the year. Mr. Chairman, I choose not to participate in your illegal activities. Up to you. Okay. Uh, the next item on business is 
uh, the transfer of the remaining amount of the refunds to the people outside the district from 2012 budget to the 2013 budget. I cannot tell you how that, how much that is. Uh, I've asked for it. I've asked for it in a legal notice. Uh, I told that there was no such list. And I cannot believe that, uh, Julie, can you explain why there's no such list that uh, that exists? I've got it in writing from you here that uh, uh, that no such list exists. I can uh, read my public request to you. I am in uh, receipt of your, this is your answer back to me, I am in receipt of your public Records request as follows. I am requesting a list of all people and agencies that received a fund during the year 2012 for being assessed but not being in the Mose Lake Irrigation Rehabilitation District. Included on this list, I'd like to know the years that they were paid for and the amount of each year. And your answer is MLIRD does not possess such a list. And I guess I got to ask you, why don't we exist to have such a list? I cannot believe that we're sending out refunds to the school, sending it out to the different outfits, and we don't have a list. Is this uh, the wrong wording, or what is the reason for this? I did not create a list. I have a record in other means, but I don't have a specific list that you're asking for. If you want to see canceled checks and spreadsheets and things like that, that's different. I don't, I don't create documents to answer your request. But you you don't have any kind of a list that exists. Is that what you're Not saying? No, that includes everything that you want there. You can call it spreadsheet. Hmm. I, I I can't believe we do not have a list. And if we don't have such a list, then uh, I move that we make such a list. That, uh, we, that we build a list of, that has that information on it. Because at this point in time, I have no idea within $100,000 of how much we paid back to these people. Well, that's, we, we, that's a heck of a position to put the board in. No, just ask me for a dollar figure. I, I don't want just a dollar figure. So I far want the names and the people. So far we How much? How much? 207 993. Nine, nine, Mr. Chairman, you have a motion on the floor without a second. Well, I was trying to get that information uh, as far as the amount. Um, Julie, um, how, um, can you give me kind of a number of how many different organizations we actually have given checks to? Just a round number, it doesn't have to be exact. Not off the top of my head. Five, ten, less, more than ten, less than ten. I don't know. It's been spread out over a period of time. Okay. Uh, so I can't can you tell me about how many people have come in and asked for refunds that have been um, kind of, uh, I'm going to say, um, maybe asked to come later and ask? Uh, I'm not quite sure how to word it. Have you had any requests for funds that we have not been able to fulfill yet? Well, I have about 54 sitting out there now. Okay, so we have 54 people that have asked for refunds, and, and can you tell me why? <coughs> Do you know, have you done any research to see if they deserve the refund? These started flooding in the day after the election. No, no research has been done to this point. I think that will be addressed later in the meeting if you look at okay. this agenda. Okay. Got it. <clears throat> All right. Um, all right, so, I mean, what was the process for the, say, the first person that came in? How, how did you deal with that? Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask for a second for continued discussion. Be allowed. All right. Will you give me a second on the. Uh, well, I'm still kind of. I, 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 I think we're in, in doubt on how much that amount is here, Ron. Yeah. And I would make a new motion uh, stating that we transfer the remaining amount of the refunds to the people outside the district from 2012 to the budget to the thir 2013 budget. And the remaining amount, uh, which was 300000 to start out with, is now down to, which we've used, $207,993.27. Is that uh, correct, Julie? I believe so. Okay. Uh, so it would be just, just under 100000 that we'll be transferring. Okay. And can I get a second on that? I would second that. Okay. 
Now open for discussion. Discussion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The reason I, I'd like I'm looking at this thing is because I believe that these people that these 54 people have come in and applied for the refunds have only done so because they believe they have a refund coming. Um, if we don't make sure that money is set aside there and put it in the budget, uh, we may have to take it from other places that we, it needs to be in order to uh, get these money to refund that they, they are well deserved. So I think we should protect ourselves and put that money in a fund that's going to protect them, protect us, uh, be able to put in the, in the budget so it makes sense for everybody. Ron, do you want to participate again? Okay. I'm uh, going to go ahead and call for the question on this. Uh, the motion was to transfer the remaining amount for refunds to the people outside of the district of 2012, move it to the 2013 budget. And that number is uh, the remaining amount, when you take away the $207,993. And 27 cents. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Once again, I abstain. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that takes care of that. And uh, I would like a list of all the people and companies that uh, were paid a refund. Uh, I think that is uh, in keeping with what we need to know. Uh, hiring somebody to actually <coughs> certify whether these people have it coming or don't have it coming in and, and uh, uh, without some some list being able to give to these people showing the ones that have already been paid uh, I don't think we expect them to go ahead and certify anything until that's been done so uh, my motion is to furnish a list of all people and companies paid a refund for the being assessed outside of the district Second. Second. Okay. I suggest that you modify the motion to direct staff to create a list. Yes, right. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, I would change that to direct staff to make up such a list uh, of all the people and companies paid a refund for being assessed outside the district. For the discussion? Well, I think. I'm okay. Good on. Yeah. I think to keep for the anyone to try to keep the staff, the directors that are voted by the public out here, uh, to for us to watch out for you guys uh, is negligent. I think uh, that should have been a process that should have been taken care of all along. We should have been we should have been notified or something, some kind of a uh, a list should have been provided to the directors go on the whole time so that we know what's going on because we're kind of in the dark. I mean, we're being told, oh yeah, we. this is the first time I've heard this figure and I've been here for three years. And so this is not a new issue. Uh, this is something that should be up front, above board, uh, should be right where everybody can see it. And uh, I think we have to do this. Okay. Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Moving on. Uh, was just resigned. The documents she would need to do that are sealed for retention. So how in the world would you expect that to take place? Well, I think the board should have the right to that information. I want to make sure that it doesn't get destroyed. Uh, well, that's why it's sealed. I'm under the statute. It's sealed for a period of six months, uh, which statute doesn't say this. It drafted back in the 1890s or early 1900s. But that's to preserve the records. So should there be a uh, recount? Uh, but uh, I'm not hearing that there uh, was a demand for a recount. <coughs> So there been a demand for a recount? Uh, not at this point in time, but there so has been if, a claim. If the staff is unable to create the list without opening the sealed box, uh, I, I don't think they can open the sealed box in the absence of the recount. Now, if, if there are records that would indicate 
I'm not, as I read the request here, unless the uh, absence of people who actually voted. Well, this is those will be sealed. So if somebody wants to, to file a lawsuit for a, a recount and challenge the election, then the judge can open that box. But I don't, I don't think uh, the, the board can. The um, <clears throat> the question is how much, how many absentee uh, ballots were sent out? I would think the district would probably have a record of that, wouldn't you? The requests come in and they're filled. Well, the, 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 there's lots of landmines in this type of, uh, yeah, of activity I, 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 because of the statutory language, that, which is, and it's 8703-100. I'd like to just take a brief minute to address uh, what I've come up with on that. Uh, oh, let me find my notes here on that. Last meeting, we didn't want to uh, act on it because of the fact that we had a couple items there that uh, uh, we felt were, we needed to go back to the city and talk to them about. And so I did go back to the city. I talked to Ann Henning, I talked to uh, Gil Averado. Uh, and then uh, they, I pinned them down as far as the sidewalk goes, as far as the streets go, uh, asking them whether we can be required to improve the streets and improve the sidewalks on somebody in front of somebody else's property. And their answer to that was no. Uh, the only thing that you'll be required to do as far as streets and sidewalks and, and uh, curbing gutters of that thing would be what's in front of your property and the property that's tied to. So uh, when you start looking at that part of it, uh, basically the street comes down and dead ends uh, onto our property. So that part we wouldn't have that much of an obligation. The, uh, the water in the sewer, uh, there is water up on Marina Drive. There's a fire hydrant right up on Marina Drive. But they said that there's a good chance uh, that we might have to put a hydrant down next to the property there. And uh, which would be a matter of tying on from the existing hydrant or real close to it and bringing it down and putting it on the property. Uh, the sewer, that was the big thing. Uh, they told me to go talk to uh, Russ Brown and maybe he could help us as far as what we're looking at there. Uh, when I talked to Russ, uh, he said, yeah, there's two different directions we can go. We either can go up the street and pump it uh, back up to where the car wash is, or we can go down the street and we can go down uh, where the railroad track actually crosses Marina Drive. Uh, and I asked him if he could give us any kind of an estimate on what this might cost. And his uh, answer was that the city does not do estimates. Uh, they do estimates as far as having a bid that they put out themselves, but as far as uh, saying that uh, it's going to cost you roughly this much, they said that they used to do it and they got into so much trouble because uh, somebody <coughs> ended up paying twice as much or more, and then they come back on the city and I can understand. I said, I totally understand where you're coming from. Huh? Uh, he said the best thing that we could do would be go talk to an engineer, uh, and he mentioned Phil Bloom directly as a, as a reference, and talk to them and see if they cannot uh, possibly take a preliminary uh, cladding. In other words, it would be something that you could be using for your cladding process, but uh, rather than go very deep into it, it would be uh, look at what would be required, uh, maybe even take it to city council and uh, get an answer one way or the other, work the engineer, work with the city and see if they come up with the best and cheapest way to go there and uh, make it work for everybody. Uh, so I went and talked to Phil Bloom and uh, Phil Bloom said he'd be more than happy to try and do a preliminary search on this piece of property and get back to us and let us know uh, where we stand on it. And uh, at this point in time, I uh, would like to leave it at that rather than trying to take on a new business of hiring somebody. Uh, that part I do not want to get into, but I did want to just report uh, what I'd come up with at this point in time. And, Ron? Have you obligated this to any costs with Mr. Bloom? No. Okay. I just talked to him, and he said that uh, uh, it would be about two weeks before he could actually get on it, but uh, he said he'd be. 
uh, that was fine. More, we just needed to yeah. Yeah. be more than happy to uh, take it on and get us an answer and, and keep us moving ahead on it. Uh, Clay? How about the railroad? Uh, the railroad, we have a, uh, a, a contract that they gave us uh, that uh, is good for 20 years and it is a, uh, as far as I'm concerned, pretty, pretty open as far as uh, any requirements that they uh, would come up with. So uh, we do have that in, we're, we're not going to sign a 20 year contract until we actually do the property, but uh, we do have it and it was uh, everything that they presented to us with the exception of one thing I did uh, challenge them on. Uh, they were talking about it being a private crossing and I told them this was not private uh, and I didn't like the wording using private and so I got them to change it to uh, the functions of what we do as an irrigation district and be allowing uh, traffic to come and go on that basis. So that's an update on that. I would like to at this point in time uh, get off of my agenda as far as the first half of the agenda goes right here and uh, move into the new business. And that first item on new business is presenting Rich Archer with a plaque for three years of service. And Rich, I cannot tell you thank you enough. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to say, uh, Rich has been in it for three years here now, and I don't know how he's managed to keep coming here with a smile on his face. Uh, but nevertheless, Rich, I, I think that you have been a very calming uh, part of keeping this thing going. And I, uh, I always respect your opinion, and I just uh, feel that uh, if you hadn't been here around Kobe, I'd probably been out here in the street and, and slugging it out. But, uh, uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, Rich. I want to thank the guys that voted to get me in this thing. I really appreciate it. Um, through hell or high water, it's been a quite a learning experience for me. Um, when I first started coming into this organization, the first couple meetings, there was me, maybe two or three people out in the audience. And I mean, the director sat here, the audience sat right there. It was that close. It was a very, very small room. And so I came into this thing, I'm thinking, you know, We've got Moses Lake sitting out the most beautiful lake in the whole state, and nobody seemed to care. And I thought, you know, we've got to put a light on this thing and get people to involved. And now I look out in the audience and I see uh, very well-known people that uh, have got a, a, a truly an investment in Moses Lake. So I'm extremely proud to say that, uh, I don't know if I created it, but uh, uh, it happened. Let's say that. You know, we just had to let, get the information out there, get people involved. You guys are really involved. It's great to see all these neat ideas coming. Uh, you know, I can't say I've sit here and had a good time every meeting, but, uh, <laughs> but I, my dad told me a lot of times, a long, long time ago, it's a lot easier to smile than it is to frown. So I try to keep a smile on my face whether I believe it or not. So I thank you, and I hope like crazy that everybody stays involved uh, I love seeing this many people out here, and it's a great thing. So now I'm going to be able to turn it over to Mr. Kernan. I truly respect this man. I think he's a great. I think he can be a great director. So. Ken, will you uh, step forward? Hello. Hello. Ken, if you step right. In front of the table, please. Oh, yeah. Go find the chair. <laughs> you raise your right hand and just repeat after me. Pursuant to RCW 8703082. Pursuant to RCW 8703082. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support and observe that I will support and observe the Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws of the United States of the United States and the state of Washington and the state of Washington as well as the ordinances as well as the ordinances and adopted policies and adopted policies 
of the Moses Lake Irrigation and Rehabilitation District. Of the Moses Lake Irrigation and Rehabilitation District. I will faithfully discharge. I will faithfully discharge. The duties as a director. The duties as a director. Of the Moses Lake Irrigation and Rehabilitation District. Of the Moses Lake <coughs> Irrigation and Rehabilitation District. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. To impartially preserve. To impartially preserve. Protect and present. Protect and represent. Present, I'm sorry. Protect and, and represent. represent. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the interests of Moses Lake Irrigation and Rehabilitation District. The interest of Moses Lake Irrigation and Rehabilitation District. Subscribe to this eighth day of January 2013. Congratulations. Thank you. Here. You're going to sit in the center here. Uh, I'm so excited. I forgot to get your Let's have him switch so I can see him, please. <laughs> no, you're through with your orders, Mitch. Can, can you let him sit in the center? Ron, I'm not through with my orders. Just let him take it. I'm here. I'm here. Just back off. I'm here. Just back off. I'm here. Okay. The next item of business is the chairman of the board. And uh, I'd like to open up at this point in time to nomination for chairman of the board. And I would like to uh, take one step further and nominate Ken Kern as the new chairman for the board. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I move to close the nominations and cast a unanimous ballot for Mr. Kernan. It's been moved and seconded that we close the nomination. Need a second, sir. What? We need a second. Okay, I will second. Thank you. I will second that part of it. I nominated that you second that part. You don't have to second a nomination. Okay. All right. <laughs> we will. This is a motion. This this is a motion to cast a unanimous ballot for Kendra. And uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> aye. You guys don't know how much I wish this was my fishing rod and you were moving. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so much easier. <laughs> see, is this, uh, is that, uh, is that uh, Rich, is this yours? Uh, uh, no, nope. well, that's yours. Okay. Uh, All right. I'm going to make a real quick change here. <laughs> Rich, you've got a box here if you'd like to have it with your black there. It might make it a little easier to get home with it. Thank you. Now, where in heaven do I go from here? Uh, I have one agenda. I actually have two agendas. Uh, I know you guys don't want to say Pledge of Allegiance again, so we won't do that. As to this agenda, if I may, if I can, uh, we've got to this point right here, and I've got a couple of these things here that uh, actually uh, talked to you earlier about, about including them, so I don't want to finish that, and then we can go immediately on to the other. Let's we'll see if we can squeeze that in somewhere down the line, and you may have to direct me on protocol, so I just... You, you, are, you are the chair, uh, so you get to, to propose the agenda, the standard practices that the board will adopt the agenda, but you, you are in control of the agenda. And as I understand, this is, this is the most recent agenda you've come up, modeled after... Uh, uh, most of the other agendas in the, in the state. And it's, it's really fairly a simple agenda as I read it. Uh, the one thing I didn't understand and was lacking is a place in here for uh, questions and comments from the directors. Uh, I didn't see anything, and, and that would be specifically for me, uh, a place where the, something that's not an agenda item, a director could come up and, and discuss. You, you are free to add that. I like all the liberties that I'm getting. <laughs> uh, we're to the approval of the minutes, and we have no minutes. So and obviously, that uh, the agenda should be modified to remove the approval of the, the minutes because they're on the consent agenda. 
We have no presentations, no public hearings, and no board reports as I understand it. The consent agenda, which includes the approval of minutes. No, item B of oh, the consent agenda is still needs to be addressed. Oh, the approval of bills and shell. Approval of bills, checks, and vouchers. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ron? I would move for a passage of the uh, consent agenda item B. Okay. Uh, I, I want the uh, bills and uh, vouchers pulled off the consent agenda. I think those should be addressed separately. I, I do okay, not. Others, there's no, there's no second for the motion, so there's no proper discussion at this point. You want to second the motion, and then we can discuss it. I hear no second. I'm going to second the motion. Okay. Discussion? Uh, I, I just feel the bills need to be looked at, and they need to be approved by the board, and uh, put on the consent agenda, and just flush them down like nobody's going to look at them. I, I disagree with that. I do not feel that the bills should be put on the consent agenda at any meeting. Can I just draw your attention to it's December's? You've already signed all the checks. If you go to tab number five, the register and the reconciliation are there. They match. You've already signed them all. So you if, if it's no more than the past bills, then I don't have a problem with it. But uh, that's, that's uh, all but, it is. But you, I think you've included. Okay, well, there are December checks which would be approved uh, that we will be still signing those checks, right? No, this You're is January. Free. Huh? You're this already. is January. It's ones you've already done. Well, if they're December checks, they're they've already approved. In December. They're, they're written out in December. Uh, I, I don't know. I can't tell you by looking at the numbers. They were reflected in the book. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just do not like the fact that the bills be put on the consent agenda. That's that's my view. And I would like to have them pulled. Uh, we can go ahead and approve them separately, but I do not like a uh, consent agenda where it's automatically just everything done on one big clean sweep. <clears throat> Call for the question. question. As to the approval of, of the bills and checks and the vouchers, uh, December checks, uh, uh, I'll call for the vote from the board. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Yeah. Presentations, public hearings, board reports, we have none. Now, action items. Uh, We're going we're gonna to still allow all the public input that we have been allowing previously. We're going to try to limit it to three minutes for each individual that wants to speak into, uh, on the matter. Uh, what I'd love to see is if there's half a dozen of us in here in support of a, a yay or nay, depending on what item we're addressing, if we had a three-minute dissertation from someone in the audience in and you're also in favor, of it and you feel that uh, he's pretty well expressed your views. For the uh, for the sake of saving time, if you could just get up and say, I agree with uh, what Joe just said, and you still get your three minutes uh, if you want them. But uh, again, for the sake of saving time, I don't want to I don't want to handicap anybody as to what they feel they have to say. But, and once the three minutes on that given issue is done, then it's done. Uh, we're going to, if you're more than willing to speak to the next, uh, to the next issue, but you get your three minutes and the board will take this, that into consideration. It's just for the sake of time, and some of these things are so controversial, and it's it shotguns, and we'll see how that works out. Uh, Item A, the reinstatement of professional decorum, code of conduct, and adherence to Robert's rules of order. 
I was, who placed that on the, is that the staff staff? Uh, could you, could you define that for me, uh, uh, Kurt? What's that all about? What it's all about? Yeah, yeah, what are we trying to do right here? Well, I'll just reinstate the, uh, the profession of the court and code of conduct code and here's the Robert's rules. Uh, is, is, is that in some way similar to, if we, if we instate the government policy, does that in essence do the whole thing? No. no. Okay. All right. It's basically all the, the mean the way it means. It. Those, were, those were, were rescinded last year? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there any comments from the audience, Bill? Well, I, if there's no minutes reflecting that these things are withdrawn or, or done away with, then they're apparently still in existence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, um, I set up there for a couple, three years, and I don't recall anywhere where we actually took out the Robert's Rule. I think we kind of much run everything that way, so it just seems like why change something that we've been doing all along? So you don't even remember? I don't remember that. It was in the first meeting in January, and it was yeah. passed by the board, so we do need to have the board. Uh, I, I firmly believe that we have to follow with the Roberts Rules of Order. And, and kind of hopefully everybody will stick to that. that a, you know that that set of rules that's that's clearly laid out and it's pretty pretty general but it kind of keeps everything moving along and in a uh, orderly fashion so I would say just to stay with the Roberts rules of order and until it becomes a problem if it does thank you um, I'm just going back because I kept notes from the different meetings <coughs> January 17th uh, last year uh, Mick was asked about following the Roberts rules of order he said that I'm sorry, Mick, but I'm quoting you. You said the chairman can do what he wants because he's the chairman, mm -hmm. and pretty much threw out what the rules. No, no, no. I uh, think that you. Okay, I'm just saying that uh, we said we were going to follow Robert's rules of order, and I think if you read a little further, you'll you'll see that in there. Okay. Good. Yeah, I just. Uh, and that's a, that's another thing too. Uh, anything from from the audience? can come to the whole board, not to just an individual member of the board, and, and, and we'll respond at the proper time. Jerry? Well, yeah, I don't know what she says, right or not, but uh, I thought there was one discussion at one time about using abbreviated rules. There must be like uh, Robert's Rules for Dummies or something like that, that uh, can be available to everybody and not have a big, <coughs> thick book like Dr. Kobe had at a couple of meetings. Um, so. That's something that I don't think we need. We're not the U.S. Senate, you know, we're not you know, the House of Representatives. We just need something simple that says, here's what you know, call to order means, here's what uh, point of order means, and, and stuff like that. But you know, something that can fit down in two or three pages and even put on a website so we can all access it. But I don't think we need the big, thick, you know, the full volume, you know, the 2013 edition, because uh, I think they keep changing. That's just my two cents. Thank you, Jeff. Anyone else in the audience? <clears throat> Ken, I very distinctly remember in January <laughs> saying uh, that I was against trying to mismatch the governance policy against the rubber Rules of Order. And uh, in turn, we did away temporary with the governance policy. And that's what's coming up here. But as far as the Roberts Rules of Order, uh, that's always been what I consider that what we've been trying to make happen here is, is to keep it and keep it in, and uh, stay on on course with it. So uh, I would be very surprised if you look at December's or January's uh, last year's minutes that you won't find that to be the case exactly in there somewhere. I, and I, as far as Having to go any further with what we got going here, I I don't think that uh, uh, anybody's in disagreement that we stick with Robert's rules of order. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I went to the director, so we're going to stick with the director. Uh, well, my comment is this: we deviated from Robert's rules uh, 
more than we followed them last year. And so for that reason, I think it's important that we once again establish ourselves as following Robert's Rules of Order, latest edition. And we don't have to know the whole book. I don't know of anybody that knows the whole book. But there are certain things that you do look up and you do learn. And they're, they're just the high points. And I think we need to follow them. I think it's important. And my, my whole confusion is, if you look at number three in the uh, C3, it says operate by Robert's rules of order in the governance, in, in the governance policy. So that's, that's what I understand about one in that, That's the third item in the, in the governance policy itself, is uh, you adhere to Robert's rules of order. But we're not following the governance policy at this point. And, and of course, my, my, I hate to use the word argument, my reply would be uh, if we adopt the governance policy, does it not, not also reinstate the answer yet? Sure. I, I, I would. Uh, uh, Ken, can I make one? Certainly. Oh, certainly. Uh, before we actually. Uh, I, I have no problem with A. I mean, basically, that's saying we're going to adhere to Robert's Rules of Order, and that's been exactly what we've been trying to do. I'm not saying that uh, it's been 100%, but uh, that's been the, the attempt. Uh, as far as reinstating the governance policy, uh, I think when you get to that topic, I'd like to discuss that with you because I think that uh, uh, there is things in there that contradict uh, what Robert's Rules of Order actually says. And uh, the, I think that before we actually do that, I'd like to see us take a look at it for a month and uh, decide for sure if we don't need to go back and take a look at it because uh, there is some things in there that are very, very uh, controversial and, and contradicting each other. But uh, as far as as far as A goes, I, I hope for well, that's what we're dealing with now. I guess yeah. is, is A. So uh, I guess I could call this to question and, and move for a vote. You need a motion. And I do need a motion. I would uh, call for the uh, reinstatement of Robert's Rules of Order according to the way it's written there on uh, action item A. Go ahead. So what about the professional decorum and code of conduct? Are you including that as well? Uh, all of item A there. Okay. Yeah. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> on, to, on to item B. <laughs> oh, all opposed. <laughs> Guys, I, I got a loaning process to go through. Number one, I got to bring water up here because, or a beer because my, <laughs> my mouth is so dry right now. It's me. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the motion passes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> See, Counselor, you're blocking my wife. My wife is right behind you. That's her. Is that better? Support. <laughs> She's much prettier than you are. <laughs> That's not hard. We need a vote. I, oh, she did. Thank, thank you, Dr. Uh On to item B, reinstatement of the Governance policy dated October the 12th, 2010. Uh, are there any audience questions? <laughs> uh, anybody want to comment on it from the audience? We're not sure what it is. Would you define what it is? <laughs> here it is, right here. <laughs> and I know you know who it is. Uh, to me, it, it, it simply defines uh, the appropriate relationship between the board and, uh, and management. That's it. It's just it's defined roles, period. And it's, it's at least it's some form of structure to where the right hand knows what the left hand is doing or should be doing anyway. So in a nutshell, I believe that's what it would be, Ron. Yeah, that's pretty close. And uh, it, uh, it gives us uh, a guideline to follow, uh, one of which our uh, insurance agent asked that we, and the auditors both asked that we we establish, and it was done so a couple of years ago before I was sitting on the board. Um, and the other thing that, that you need to consider is the fact that uh, Mr. Hansen seems to think that there are some discrepancies between the two 
what we accept in our ordinance or in our governance policy supersedes Robert's Rules of Order. So if there is discrepancy, we follow our governance policy uh, as it has been laid out. And with that in mind, I would move that we reinstate the governance policy of October 12, 2010. And if you do that, I have to call for a vote in the committee? You have to wait for a second. <laughs> uh, is the discussion period over? Or can I say something? You make a move more <laughs> You got a motion. You're, you're, you're going to have to second it yourself there at this point in time. I'm going to, I'm going to second that motion, uh, okay. Mick. Uh, I, I've read the... the okay. I, I just wanted to bring out a couple items here now that it's been seconded. Uh, if I have the floor. The discussion period? Is that what we're into now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I get a little confused <laughs> okay. here. Okay. No. Right. Right. Uh, on, on page 8, uh, votes during meetings of the board shall be transacted as follows. Uh, board members shall vote on all matters before the board unless a statutory conflict of interest exists. If there is a conflict of interest, that director shall state the conflict of interest and abstain from discussion and from voting on that matter. Uh, Ron, you have a number of times over the last year here abstained from voting, uh, giving no reason whatsoever. Uh, well, let me, let this, me respond this is, to that since you're, you're making an accusation of a night. Usually I've indicated that because I felt they were illegal actions or activities and that's why I chose not to vote and so I would abstain. No. Uh, there's been other times that you just didn't like the direction it was going and, and if any director refuses to vote A or nay, their vote shall be counted as an A. Unless the director provides a reason to abstain. So uh, that's something that I think is a little bit different than Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, agenda items. Uh, if you go down here and start reading number eight in its entirety, uh, anybody wishing to speak to the board of directors on the agenda item, assign the med meeting register and indicate their desire to speak to the president, presiding chairman at the beginning of the meeting when asked, unless otherwise recognized by the chair. When an agenda item is on the floor for discussion, the presiding chairman will recognize this person. In other words, they've got to sign up out there and tell us what they want to talk about at the start of the meeting, that's the biggest problem I had with that item there. Uh, and then the manner of addressing the board, each person's addressing the board shall step up to the microphone. We don't have a microphone. Uh, give his name, name, address, subject matter, comment, and an audible. Uh, there, there's just a, not a lot of things, but I think a few things on here that uh, maybe should be looked at before we pass it and put it back into effect again. I don't know. I'm just saying that uh, I, I don't have a problem. Uh, you're the one that's got to try and deal with it <laughs> now. But I had I had a, a number of areas that I had conflicts with, and that's why I, I wanted to send it out. And, and, and I appreciate those concerns, Mick. I noticed the same thing too, and I, was, I also noticed that I've only testified a few times. And it's, I guess that's what's called a testimony, and uh, and you do have to follow the specific steps of get, of uh, signing in and standing up, identifying yourself, uh, etc. And, and obviously, for the obvious reasons of if at some point in time, number one, for identification purposes on the tape transcription, and number two, for the board may have to give back to you uh, with a response to whatever you addressed. Uh, you know, there's, some, there's so many rules and regulations, <laughs> and, and uh, if they just took that and put it into two things, you know, if, if it's not true, don't say it, and if it's wrong, don't do it. Unfortunately, it's, it's, there's, there's so many there's so many regulations. I think we're nipping, picking, and I I, I I understand where you're coming from, uh -huh, precisely yeah. where you're coming from. Uh, uh, well. So you're the one that's going to have to decide yeah. whether, we're going to, whether you're going to have people pre-register. We're, we're going to be bending a lot of rules. We just don't want to break them. So, I, 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 I'm not, and I, I appreciate your point of view. Ken, can I ask you, would you uh, feel comfortable with maybe having somebody look at it and uh, come back in a month and uh, make a... Uh, well, I think we tried that once before, didn't we? Didn't you well, we that? yeah, we've been so what? tied up here that I... Can I ask, was this, was this lawyer attorney approved? Attorney approved it. <laughs> and, and, and there is a process that in might there. Cause me to vote against it. And then, <laughs> okay. And the insurance carrier approval. 
there's a process within their kin to to amend and, and change in how to go about changing or whatever yeah. and within that law. Two meetings. There's, it can be amended uh, with two meetings. Uh, so it isn't it isn't like it's concrete. Uh, sure. uh, uh, I'm going to deviate some rules. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, in most organizations or boards, these have to be instated in order to make any changes to them. If they're if you're not running by those rules and, and regulations, you can't change them later. So in order to go in, you have to be acting on them, and then you go in and vote to make changes. Can you come and sit in my chair, please? <laughs> 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 Okay, I'm gonna call for a I'm gonna call for a vote on it. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, all opposed. <laughs> Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> item C: reinstatement of meeting sign-in sheets for any audience members wishing to make comment when called on by the chairman of the board. Just down the middle ground, I think. Uh, just, uh, any, any discussion on that? Uh, again, I feel that we just took care of that with the government's policy. <laughs> Sandy, is that a hand? Well, I'm Sandy. I was just, and if I was going to come in and speak, I may not know what I wanted to direct to the board until the meeting got rolling. Good. How could I? And I appreciate that too. I could uh, sign in. I think that's where the where the rule has to de be deviated from. Uh, I uh, I've had that problem in here where I, I signed up outside and, and, and the, during the course of the conversation I took interest in another item and thought, well, let me query on that one. So I understand and. I think that's where the gray area is going to be able to want to sit in with. And well, we I see where where you could sign in, but if you wanted to um, expound on a topic, you know, at 6.30 when we come in the door, until the meeting gets going, how would you know what you want to especially talk about, unless or how to comment about, unless the minutes were provided ahead of time in the paper. Yeah, I, and, and I get I relate to the way that uh, the bills board does it, uh, and he chairs the board to where uh, at the beginning of the meeting he queries the audience as to who is here to speak on a on agenda item, <coughs> and and they identify themselves at that point, and then of course he has he has the names there. And then he asks for who wants to speak on non-agenda items and creates a second list. I think that I think that's kind of a great way to do it personally, but, um, mm -hmm. but the same problem would arise with Bill during the course of his meeting. I don't know how he handles that, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> I'm going to find out. Uh, any, I'm, Mary Perry, yeah, Lakeshore Drive. Is this one of the, you mentioned it's in the governance policy? Maybe this is something you can look at as we go along and amend that particular one rather than vote on it. No? It sounds like we that, did. That, that is in the It is. It is. You're right. It is in the government policy. I know. Now that you say that. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna table that item. <laughs> I'm gonna table that item. Uh, the uh, any B. Let me call for a vote of directors for table. Okay. Uh, what am I working on now? Uh, we're all, we're working on the sign-in sheet. Next on the sign-in sheet. Okay. You wish to table that? Is I that wish to table that. Item. I would uh, move that we table that for at least one minute. I don't think we need to move. You, you need a motion and a vote immediately. No yeah. discussion. Motion and vote. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Uh, <laughs> aye. Aye. <laughs> 
Okay, uh, item D, the 2013 budget proposal, and gosh, by the way, I've got a problem. Uh, your, your budget. Uh, My budget. 2013 budget. This was the budget that was presented. Oh, okay, that's not, that's not the district budget. This was the budget that was presented um, after the rolls and everything were approved. Um, <coughs> that in November. Look back at your heads. <laughs> 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 that's not the January 2013 budget. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, let me question the attorney. Should I do? But, <laughs> I don't see how we can decide on this this type of budget with this this monetary figure when we're currently. As I understand it, at a, a 50 cents uh, assessment rate. Uh, well, that's. Uh, I'm putting the horse before the cart. Valid we do. Uh, concern, and uh, that's a decision the board has to make. What the budget will be in light of the, uh, the uh, accrued assessment rule. Well, this question here: uh, Do we need to rescind? Previous action that was taken on this then before we actually passed this? Which action? Action of establishing the 25 25 limit. An action that was taken on a budget last month or the month before, whenever. It's my understanding that uh, prior boards, other than in contract and property matters, cannot bind subsequent boards. So the board has a right to, to uh, go back and revisit issues if it chooses to do so. But it, and it, it's a proper procedure, I believe, would be to, to rescind the prior action and reopen the matter for consideration. So if I hear you right, you have to rescind there would have to be a motion to rescind that's approved, and then uh, you could revisit the issue of the assessment. And, and I guess rescind was was the budget was a budget adopted? The budget that was adopted wasn't present or presented. This was the one that was presented at Buck. There was no twenty-five cent. Twenty-five cent. So the budget, budget was already adopted, but it was based on the, the dollar. Uh, assessment, total yeah. assessment. And the rolls, I believe, were approved at a dollar. But then there was some action. I was not here that meeting. There was some action, there was some action that says purported to reduce the, the assessment from that stated in the rolls. Is that right? I don't know if I was here. <laughs> that, that's, that's what the minister would be helpful. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I think I can make it easy by making a motion. And I move that we rescind uh, both the 25 cent, 25 cent assessment and the um, earlier budget that was passed by this board in November, December, whichever it was. As reflected in the record. <laughs> in the recording. I, I second. I'll second the motion. Discussion. Uh, sir, go ahead. Okay, does this mean that it's automatically going to go back to the uh, $1 per 1000 Or does that mean that you guys can yeah, actually... I haven't decided that yet. Okay. Well, so, um, or does that mean that you... What I'm asking, I guess, is... Is it, does it automatically go back to the one dollar thing, or are you going to have to be able to renegotiate, let's say, and say, okay, maybe we want to do it at three quarters, you know, twenty-five fifty, 
instead of 2,575? Yeah, I just will automatically do that. Whatever we decide. Okay, that's what I'm asking. So you guys will make, make the decision at a later date in order to right. no. I could be the same at a, a 50 percent or at maybe a 75. <coughs> so it'll be up to you three guys. It'll be up to the board. Okay. Anyone else from the audience? Uh, members? Question. I would like to discuss this a little bit. Go ahead with further discussion. Uh, I think we ought to be aware that at the present time this is uh, presented to the state auditor, uh, the attorney, by the, not, at state auditor on the uh, local level here, more on the, that level, but also uh, it has been turned over to the Attorney General to get an official ruling on this. Uh, and I'm not at liberty to say exactly what the requests are, but it has been presented to the Attorney General, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, and uh, I just use caution uh, on anything we do here that uh, it could come back to bite us. And so uh, you guys do what you want. I will not be voting for it, uh, understandably. But uh, I just think that uh, to thumb our nose in the face of the state auditor and say, uh, we don't care what you think, we're going to go ahead and do it anyway, I, I, th I think we're uh, going beyond what we should be going beyond. And I'll leave it at that. Speaking in favor of the motion, we have been informed already by our legal counsel that he feels that he can defend the position and the formula we have taken in the past in establishing the rate at which we uh, assess the ratepayers uh, for both the uh, irrigation and rehabilitation portions. And therefore, I don't see a problem. I feel that we're working within the parameters that uh, uh, give us the opportunity to establish uh, the necessary funds to accomplish the needs for this irrigation district. And uh, therefore, I speak in favor of the motion, and I'm comfortable with what our attorney has related to us in the past. And it's my under my understanding. I'm not overlooking you, Jerry. It's, it's uh, my understanding that uh, uh, this is something that is is in limbo. And, and as to our assessment methodology, be it, it uh, whether it's fifty cents or a buck. Uh, it doesn't matter. I, it, uh, it's the methodology that question. I'll try to make myself clear on this subject. Of, uh, apparently, I've not been able to make myself clear on the, the question, the major question that the local auditor has raised <coughs> relates to the methodology and whether you can assess for irrigation purposes based on a, a, a cent per thousand basis. And as I've said uh, at least twice before in an open public meeting and uh, in other communications to the board, if you can't do it, it doesn't matter whether it's 25 cents or 75 cents or a dollar. You can't do it. Uh, I, I used a, apparently a bad analogy. You know, if you're going 80, you're still breaking the law. Uh, just like you are for going 90. The thing is, the penalty is all the same in this, which means that if the assessment is unauthorized on that methodology, the assessment is unauthorized on that methodology. Now, the reason I said I felt that I can defend this is because this methodology has been reviewed by the state auditor before. And there was no finding made. So the burden is going to be on the state auditor to explain uh, the state auditor's apparent change in position. Um, but uh, so so when when the board uh, uh, in November December whenever it, uh, adopted the 50 cent assessment 25 for irrigation purposes 25 for rehabilitation purposes at that point the board uh, essentially did apply the method that the auditor has been questioning. 
So whether that you, you do it for 50 cents or a dollar, the same method is being applied and the same issue is going to be present. So uh, the, the board at this point, I think, needs to, to adopt an assessment. Uh, it would be incredibly burdensome for the staff to go back and try to come up with a separate methodology at this point. The assessment rule has to be delivered to the county <laughs> next week. <laughs> Um, and, and, you know, again, as I've said before, uh, you know, I've been overwhelmed with other, other work for the district, and uh, once that action was taken to apply the question uh, assessment methodology for 2013, <coughs> I, I just, uh, you know, that, that's the decision that uh, may or may not be challenged. And I, if it is challenged, as I said, the prior uh, auditors, uh, prior audit approved the method, so they'll have some explaining to do if, if they uh, uh, make a finding on it this year. Okay. I talked to Brian about this a little bit, and, and uh, uh, the fact that if you're driving one mile an hour over the speed limit, you're a speeder. Uh, Please, I, I just want to say, you don't, you don't want to be revealing to everyone what I told you. And, and well, I'm just that's saying, you brought, up, turn. You, uh, you brought up the speeding thing here. And I, my feeling is, uh, if you're one mile an hour over your speeder, if you're 10 mile an hour over, uh, which I felt we were at proving the 25-25, uh, you might be able to say that we're doing our darndest to, to make it work. Uh, but when you're driving 30 over, uh, you're just throwing caution to the wind and uh, take your take your lumps. And well, uh, that's, that's it. again, and that's that's why I mentioned the analogy, and that's why I said it's apparently a bad analogy because it doesn't get the point across. Uh, the point being, it's methodology, and it doesn't. The quantity is not uh, important. To, as, uh, yeah. It's the methodology. And the decision was already made to apply that methodology in 2013. And would beat Miss Race Horse to death, <laughs> and we beat her to death all, all the whole time. So, I'm, I'm going to call for a, uh, the motion in question again. Would you restate it? Oh yeah, I move to uh, you to rescind uh, the uh, 25.25 cent assessment and also the earlier budget passed by the board in November slash December as reported. Right there it is. <laughs> uh, if you say that it's a little louder for me. Say that louder. Ron moved to rescind the 25.25 cent assessment and the earlier budget passed by the board in November slash December as recorded. Uh, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Now, we can go back to, um, it carries, uh, the motion carries. <laughs> no, that's okay, keep it under <laughs> I'm going to get way off. I'll get off the course until I get on course. I'm going to see you. <laughs> And it, that takes us back to the item that we were addressing, I guess, the 2013 budget proposed. And I go into, well, I was going to go to the audience first, Rich. Okay, the only only comment I have on this is, is I, as I, as a, when I came on the board here three years ago, uh, we had bought a lot of equipment, we were purchasing a ton of equipment, and uh, repairing the equipment. Uh, we had the uh, weed, uh, take care of the weeds in the lake and all that was very very expensive so now as a board I mean we're looking to you as taxpayers to be uh, responsible basically and look at the needs of what's going to take from now on uh, so in my view the needs are less because now we have our equipment working uh, the irrigation the weed part has been taken care of we're kind of a decline there and so the necessity to go and collect as much money as we did three years ago when we really needed it and what our needs are now are different. So we need to look at that very carefully and decide do we need to go back to the dollar or can we 
maybe land in the middle. I mean, that's up to you guys. I appreciate that input, so thank you. I agree with Rich with respect to uh, maybe finding out. Uh, my name is Todd Volth. I live at 1538 South Lakeway Drive. I am a repair. I agree with Rich uh, with regard to maybe something in the middle. Um, my concern is um, the slashing of the budget with regard to um, the weed spraying and the contract spraying. You know, I, I just really don't think that that, uh, that portion of the budget can be handled um, with that amount of money. Um, looking at what it cost us in the past to do the weed spraying, and I personally as a ratepayer would like to see that weed spraying continued if that could be uh, addressed as part of your budget. Th thank you. Bill Bailey, 13308 Road 10 Northeast, and I am a ratepayer as well. I have a question first for the board. Is Has there been a budget proposed by the staff? If I'm uh, not and, uh, wrong, there is Bill's yeah, uh, and, January and, 2016. Okay. So, uh, you know, in my mind, a review of that budget by the board and determination of what types of operations you're going to do and not do and so forth is in order. And I would suggest that uh, you know your income needs to be determined based on what your expenses are going to be realistic expenses that you can agree on and when you have that then you can adjust the assessment rate if possible mm -hmm. you, know, you apparently have a problem with timing of that right now i'm assuming so what i would suggest is you leave the rate alone that money be set aside. I don't know that you have anywhere. Nobody's told me yet what the liability is in front of the district as far as the refunds. You know, you've alluded that maybe it's ninety-two thousand dollars, but it might be more than that. I, you know, I certainly don't know what it is. And rather than build yourselves into a box, you know, it's pretty easy to establish a savings account and put money in it and adjust everything next year once you get this budget thing back under control. And some of you, it, I, I've, I've examined the budget, uh, I had actually ample opportunity to do that. Uh, those areas that you addressed, they covered them. They covered them. And the methodology for the uh, uh, funding, as far as for uh, accurate rate payers, that's been addressed too, as I understand it. Uh, so, yeah, I understand your concern. Uh, and we'll go from there. Can I go one comment that I'd like to make, uh, kind of based on what Bob brought up there? Uh, and that has to do with the spraying of the weeds uh, that we have actually been uh, budgeting the last three years. Uh, this was never done before three years ago. And uh, it actually was brought into the budget at that time. I think it was close to 300000 that we spent the first two years on it. And uh, this last year, uh, we figured that uh, it would be the third year and it would be tapering off considerably, and which it did. We dropped it down to the 140000 I think it was. And uh, hopefully that was going to take care of the mass of it. Uh, we have a very small budget number that's in here this year, uh, but that was kind of pre-planned. I mean, we were hoping to pretty well have it taken care of and, and then go around spot check and see what we got. And uh, so it wasn't it wasn't like it was going to be an ongoing every year three hundred type thousand dollar plan. It was a it was a uh, see the end of type and then uh, spot check from that point on. And so uh, that's why there isn't near the money budgeted for that item. Because hopefully we've we've done some good. Yes, sir. Uh, Keith Stoughton, Rouse, I'm a rate payer. Uh, I was concerned about the 25000 What I un couldn't understand is with $800,000 in the budget, with the twenty-five, twenty-five, I suppose those two line up, why, why are we only able to spend twenty-five on spraying the weeds? Uh, I mean, where is the other... Seven hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars going. Uh, we have manpower that's already budgeted. They're there. They're working. 
they can be directed, but it seemed to be from 300 to 140 to 25, quite a drop. Did you ever spray north of Parker Horn last year? You're going to have to address that to Kirk, our manager, because uh, this, like I say, this was part of that, the Yeah, uh, see uh, that, if that, that wasn't sprayed, that whole north end was just one big mat. And we had rafts of it coming down Marina Drive. It's not milfoil. I had uh, Mr. Carpenter come down. He said the uh, ecology department had to make a determination that it was an invasive weed. Uh, that seemed like duh to me, but they did. <laughs> <laughs> so he was hoping there'd be a little funds left from the 140 last year, excuse me, last year to treat that in August. Now I don't know whether they did, but if they didn't treat it and knock it down, that's going to, that, you know, you've seen it, that's going to break loose and it's just going to keep spreading. So I'd be concerned whether that had been addressed and the rest of the lake might have been under control, but that, that's just one big raft. And it was really, I was down there all weekend, knocking it off the docks, big rafts of it. Thank you. Again, I find myself thanking everybody here, and I apologize for <laughs> saying thank you at the same time you're saying thank you. But I'll get used to the fact that uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to keep myself ahead of where do I go from here. That's, 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 that's my big problem. Stepping on the turn. Any further discussion? Yes. Can dog sell uh, one five six five five uh, rate there based on your sorry. Who wrote the, the, the budget that's up there? That's prepared by the staff. Prepared by the staff. So, okay. And then what's the total on it? Five line total. Why don't you go ahead and, and explain the budget for me? It's pretty hard to get the bottom line total there. <laughs> Thank you. I'm looking at uh, $1,619,500. About twice of the eight hundred thousand more. Is that enough? I don't know. No. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move that we what do you call this? What did you refer to this as? Which number? January? That's part about the proposal. The budget. The budget. Yeah. What did you call it? January. Okay. I move that we uh, pass the budget submitted on January 8th, um, 2013 for the year of 2013. And I would like to speak um, to that once we're to that point, sir. Uh, <coughs> made a motion. Mm -hmm. There's a motion on Florida here, second. I'll second the discussion. Mr. Chairman, um, a lot of questions has come up with regard to the vegetation and the uh, spraying of the weeds and whatnot. When we started this project uh, three years ago, it was kind of an experimental project. We didn't quite know how far it was going to take us, how far we would get. I mean, we, they outlined what they were going to spray and how they were going to go about it. But, you know, the duration of uh, or how long the spray would last was questionable. Uh, it would have been great if you could spray it once and then forget about it. But we have a recurring problem. And we're finding out that this, uh, these uh, aquatic uh, weeds are going to need more herbicide treatment than we originally anticipated. It may actually be an annual thing that we have to do to keep the lake uh, as clean and fresh as we possibly can. Uh, but in the beginning, that was kind of an unknown. And to answer Jerry's question back in the back, no, not all of the lake has been has been sprayed, uh, has been treated. Uh, the parts you're referencing, no, we didn't hit that. There's a lot of the lake that has not been treated yet with the herbicide. Uh, $30,000, as in the last budget, was nowhere close enough to, to actually address this problem. It's going to be an ongoing thing from year to year to year. And some years are going to be better than others, and, and that's what we're going to have to deal with. So, 
with that having been said, once again, I speak in favor of the motion for adoption of the budget. And my only comments would be, based on my limited information now, and, 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 and the speediness of the, uh, of the decisions I, I find myself having to make, uh, I'm placing a lot of trust in the information I'm receiving from staff. I'm placing a lot of trust in the information I'm receiving from both of the directors. I've talked with both of those directors. And in good faith, I will make the decisions that I'm making now. I wish I had a little more information on some of these, but time is of the essence for two or three of these items. And if it don't get done now, just don't get done. So, I'll interrupt myself and go to Norm. Uh, yeah, I'd oh, like to know. I'm sorry, uh, Norm. Appar I apparently, don't have a second motion, so I second the motion. <laughs> <laughs> I did second that motion. Good, Norm. <laughs> What's the cost per acre to do this? I have no idea. That's what I'd like to know. Can somebody tell me? Can you respond to that? It depends on the depth of the lake, temperature of the lake, uh, what basic weeds we're going after. There's a lot of factors involved. But it ranges anywhere between 350 and, and 600 an acre. How much? 350 to 600 an acre. So with 6,400 acres in the lake, not treating all the lake. You're not treating all the lake. It's also, this, this budget includes also a pilot program on algae treatment. We had success on a, a test last year at Conley Park. So it, it does include some other invasives within that. Rich. The only thing I might have to say is, is we did just go out and hire a yellow blow to do this. Uh, I'm Rich Archer, by the way, uh, 233 Sharon Avenue. Um, we actually hired someone who had previously done this before. So we had a lot of experience and had very good success. And we went on their recommendations. And that's how we kind of followed along with this thing. So he told us right up front, uh, the first year was going to be very expensive. And then as time went on, it would get less and less and less because they would be able to uh, basically uh, do a, a broad uh, area coverage the first year to try to knock down as much as possible. And then after that, they would come back every year, find out the, the areas that had reoccurred, and hit them again. So, and these guys are very well known. They knew what they were doing. Uh, we hired them because of that <coughs> fact. So to say that uh, this is totally a brand new program is, is not true. Uh, it's something that it's ongoing, and we have to look at it every year. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? I have a question. Uh, you mentioned one point six million dollars, but I'm confused because I was reading the paper tonight, and they said the operating budget would be eight hundred and some thirty thousand. So. Now, am I talking capital and operating? Is that where I'm missing the other part, or was the paper wrong? I, I mean, that's that's a lot of money, eight hundred million dollars, and then I don't know. So, who is right? <laughs> I believe the, the paper was alluding to the eight hundred thousand based on a fifty cent assessment. They were, if you read the article. Yeah. Oh, and I think that was rescinded. What did we just do that? Well, that's why it's going to 1.6 is because when you rescind the 50, then you're automatically assuming it's going to go to a dollar and basing the budget. We've not taken that action yet. Well, it's already it's out there. Yeah. It's, currently it's, it's, currently, it's currently added. It's currently added. But if you adopt the budget of 1.6, like the gentleman said over there, you should fit your expenses first. Now you're Assuming then it's going to go to 1.6, you've got the dollars now, you're working backwards. Mm -hmm. So by going to the dollar automatically, you're, you know, there goes your expenses up. If you figure your expenses, then you may not need the dollar. You don't need the Can you amend that dollar? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm confused. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. The, the, uh, Budget was established at what we thought was going to be the rate for next year at one dollar total. 
and that's how it was established. At the last minute, two directors chose to cut that to 25-25. And so, once again, it was established on a total dollar assessment. So they're not really working backwards. They knew they had a dollar, or they thought they had a dollar to work with when staff put this together. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so basically we'll be spending, we'll be basing the budget on the dollar, and which means we're not going to build the amount we're going to spend and then figure the assessment. We're going to figure the assessment and then bring the expenses up to it. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. No. 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 Spend, spend, spend. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I thought everybody's I waiting. Guess I didn't. Well, as I understand it, we need a dollar assessment to to cover the budget that's necessary to get the job done as, that staff is requiring. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the bottom line for me, and that's what it is, that, uh, with the current, uh, with the current uh, needs, the, contra the contractual things, the, the, the programs we've got going, to maintain that and to maintain the quality of the lake, we need that dollar assessment to reach that year March 16, about May and 6. Bill? Bill Bailey, again, I think what we need to say is we as ratepayers look to you to do the best, most efficient, effective job you can. And if you don't need to spend the money, you can always put it in a, call it a rainy day fund, whatever you want to call it save it and we can reduce rates in the future but let's keep this program going and uh, you know i don't expect that you're going to spend money blindly and once you have an opportunity to review that budget you may make some adjustments you know you certainly have that prerogative but if it needs the county or state needs to have a number we better get that done and then go ahead and use your authority through the year, the incoming month, and so forth, to adjust yes. wherever you need it. Yeah, and therein lies my dilemma. It's a, it's a, it's a speedy, it's just something we got to get done. I'm just, I'm, I'm like 95 percent of the people in this audience. I, I, was, I have a, I have one parcel. Uh, I'm retired on Social Security and my police uh, pension, and I've lived month to month all my life. And my wife has me on a very strict budget. <laughs> and I really could use that extra six pack of a week, but uh, I, just, I just feel strongly that uh, the current assessment of a buck is totally necessary to keep this, this, this district running at a maintenance rate. So uh, th that's where I stand on it. Uh, Means both. Oh, what was that? Oh, 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 okay. Uh, yeah, what's the, what's the, read the motion back to me. Would you tell me the motion? Ron moves to pass a budget that was submitted, submitted January 8, 2013 for the year of 2013. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Uh, the motion passed. Said that. Uh, item E: Discussion of the Holmes Brothers property purchase and 2011 allocated funds. 2012. I'm sorry. I I don't know if we want to readdress this uh, again. Uh, yes. Uh, my question is, how do we go about this? Well, it's just time for discussion. Uh, if the discussion results in a, a, a desire to rescind the prior action, uh, the, could move the, to rescind the prior action. Also. Although, frankly, I, I don't understand the need uh, for the, the prior action to move the money into the 2013 yeah. budget anyway. I don't understand moving money. I don't understand the money moving thing anyway on the budgeting. I, that's totally fine. 
didn't know you could take money from last year and move it into this year. Well, the money doesn't the money doesn't move. No. See, it's in the bank. No. It's just a matter of approving a budget or not yeah. approving a budget, and the budget for 2013 was just approved. So I'm not quite sure what. Well, yeah. my, my, can I no. uh, my my feeling is that if we move it ahead, uh, it doesn't just end up in general fund, it is earmarked for that purpose. And this would be actually over and above what there's budget showing here. So it's carried over from one year to the next and uh, this will actually raise the budget by that much extra. But there's nothing reflected in the current budget. That's why I'm saying I'd like to keep it earmarked with that much and we didn't spend it last year, we should be able to move it ahead. I know, and but we just passed this budget. Right, I, I, I understand. <laughs> So that's when lies my dilemma, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what all just happened prior to me sitting down here either. <laughs> so I don't know how we get the file. I it's have to say that this board has had some of the most interesting questions I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> country, but um, not that smart, I guess. <laughs> I, I think. By implication, the board's action in adopting the 2013 budget that was just passed adopted a budget that did not include uh, the money for the Holmes Brothers property. Now, uh, certainly the board could uh, move to add money to the 2013 budget for that purpose. But as it stands now, the budget that exists. I think implicitly uh, overruled the, the attempt to move money from 2012 to 2013, which I, again, I just, I'm not an accountant, I don't know what, uh, we're an auditor, I don't know the need to even do that. But, um, <laughs> Any clarification, please? Do I understand you to say that by Adopting the 2013 budget and the Holmes Brothers purchase funds are not a part of that. That essentially we are walking away from any purchase of the Holmes Brothers parcel. Well, I, I don't know that you're walking away from it, but it's not part of your budget. I, I would note that the irrigation district statute 8703 does not require the district to even adopt a budget. So, the, 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 unlike in a lot of other public entities, uh, the irrigation district, uh, I mean, the auditor doesn't even audit budgets for irrigation districts. So, I, I think the substance of the issue is whether or not the district wants to spend the money on a home's property, and if it does, then it should be added to the 12, 2013 budget. Okay, this is a sensitive item to everybody. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to move to table this uh, the Holmes brother purchase property until the next uh, uh, until our next meeting in February, so I can gather more information. I would second it. I don't think I need a second on it. Uh, any up any all opposed. <laughs> what table is it? Assessment refund process, and it, that would be a uh, assessment refund process in 2012, allocated funds, new resolution protecting the district. That I would like Julie to explain, if, if that's all possible. Or, oh, okay. I'll go to the attorney. You do a better job than the attorney. I can understand the attorney. I was asked by staff to, to look at the uh, 20, I think it was 2011 refund resolution. Uh, compared to the 2012 refund resolution. So there, there was a refund uh, resolution that established a certain process in 2011. As I understand, it was developed by Chris Reese. 
It includes the uh, form that uh, was attached after tab five in your book. Um, <coughs> based on discussion. Nine, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Nine F. Tab nine. Nine F. I have reinvented uh, Chris Reese's wheel. I will say, looking at the two resolutions, I think the form that was attached to the 2011 re resolution provided additional information. It made the refund request under oath. So these people are claiming under oath that they're entitled to the money. And I think that provides greater protection to the district. So it was my recommendation to staff that they uh, uh, put this on to go essentially back to the 23, or 2011 resolution to provide greater protection to the district. It also provides more information to the staff to reduce the burden of the staff in investigating and verifying these claims. Because as discussed at the last meeting I attended, someone has to verify these claims and be able to uh, certify under oath that the money is due. And by uh, having the people who request these refunds uh, file this form, it simplifies that process and should speed up that process. I hope that was cl as clear as Julie. <laughs> yeah, well, is it necessary then to take action on the 2012 resolution that was passed? The clearest way to do this would be to rescind the 2012 resolution and to uh, uh, readopt, I guess, rescind the 20. Uh, 12 resolution and reinstate the 2011 resolution. I so move. What was the 2012 resolution? What was the one that went out with the notices? All, all the <laughs> notes. <laughs> you bring it for discussion, and I'll, I'll want to talk about it. Do I have a second on the motion? Not for me. Well, I'll second the motion and go into discussion. <laughs> okay. Uh, the 2012 resolution is a much simpler form and due to the fact that we have to go out here and we have to have it certified, uh, I see very little reason to make it that much more complicated, trying to uh, make it that much more impossible for them to get their refund. Uh, we've got to have it certified and uh, they've got enough information to certify it and it will be done uh, with without all this added this this is just added fluff that they're going to be putting into it uh, and uh, we're talking as one form here. this this form here there is a there is a simpler form uh, I don't know if that form is even available to us uh, that's the one that uh, was sent out uh, for people to fill out and so that's the one they are filling out and sending back in it basically tells the parcel and uh, shows what year that they actually paid it uh, and it's going to be up to the people to certify it at that point in time regardless of what information that you have here so uh, this is just a complication of trying to get the refund done and who yeah. created that the, the uh, Chris Reese did them both Chris did them both Chris did them both he was the attorney in 2012 next director first okay. did you have a comment go ahead the only, the only question is, uh, who certifies? Who's the certification? Is it MLIRD or the county? Uh, can I answer that? <laughs> well, can the attorney answer that? Okay. Before MLIRD can spend its public funds, its auditing officer has to certify that the debt is up. Uh, it can it can it can obtain information from other agencies, but it has to certify that the, the debt is up. So the other thing that's included in the 2011 form, it's not included in the 2012 form, 
There's an indemnity and hold harmless clause uh, by which the claimant agrees to hold Moses Lake harmless from claims by other parties. So if Joe comes in and says, give me the refund, and Moses Lake gives Joe the refund, and then Sue comes in a month later and said, I should have had that refund that you gave Joe, and Joe has to uh, defend and hold MLIRD harmless. And so that's another reason why I think that the 2011 form provides additional protections to the district. Um, yeah. Mr. Reese drew up the resolution in 2011. <coughs> he was directed by the chairman at the time to redraft the resolution and put in some other things. Uh, Mr. Reese indicated that he was having trouble doing that and remaining, um, keeping it legal, and I'm using lay terms here, but that's essentially what it boiled down to. When he brought it back to the board, he indicated to the board that he did draft it, but that he would not recommend that we passed it, that we should stick with the 2011 resolution. And uh, then when the board took action and passed it, Mr. Release, uh, Mr. Reese submitted his letter of resignation. And so that's how we got to where we are now. Uh, therefore, I think that the 2011 uh, resolution provides the uh, district with uh, some additional items, some additional language that helps to protect us a bit from, uh, like, Mr. Eiler just said, uh, some extenuating litigation that could occur. Okay, I'll call the question. What, would you read the motion back? <laughs> Dr. Kobe moves to rescind the assessment refund 2012 resolution to reinstate the 2011 assessment refund resolution. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, it passed. Uh, let me, before we get off the subject, go ahead. Uh, last meeting we talked about trying to get somebody that could certify. Uh, we've got 50 people that have applied for their refunds. Uh, we needed to have somebody that uh, could say that they actually are owed. Uh, staff didn't feel that they had the time to do it. Uh, Kurt was going to work with myself uh, in trying to come up with somebody that might be able to take this on as a side project. Uh, Kurt, I don't, I haven't heard from you, so I'm assuming that you haven't done anything as far as trying to find anybody that could to be our certification? We have a little bit. We've also discussed it with staff. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about what we're talking about. Well, um, yeah. Go ahead. You can or can. Go ahead. Um, in going back to the 2011 resolution and the <coughs> form, um, I just want to speak to the forms, the 54 forms that have, have recently come into this office. There's no consistency, there's missing information. It is a ton of research, unbelievable amount of research. Um, the way we've processed them in the past is I have done all the verifications as the auditing officer according to the governance policy, which has now been reinstated. Um, I have passed it off to my office assistant, who's now part-time, um, and she has re-verified everything. Um, We've thrown around the idea of maybe seeing if uh, an accounting firm would like to take our work and, and totally certify it. But that means that once we decide what day we're going to write that check and the interest is calculated, that accounting firm is going to have to hold that date for processing. So it, it needs further discussion. Let me, I had a chance to talk with Jim Newhouse and he's he does our, some of our accounting here already, uh, asking whether this is something that he might be able to take care of. Uh, he said he has one gal that's coming on in two weeks that, in fact, she was the gal that was here 
when he made the presentation as far as the uh, audit that they had done a year ago. Uh, he said she is coming back on staff and that she could probably handle this, uh, get it pretty well knocked out between now and the time that they actually start getting real busy as far as uh, into April with the tax session coming on. So uh, he said that he would talk with her. Uh, he would try and get some kind of a numbers put together and uh, he would try and get back to us as far as what that might possibly entail. And I told him that uh, I had information as far as 2010 goes. I've also uh, told him that he could get a hold of Lori Grammer and get the same email that I got from her showing all the people that they show. Uh, and uh, But he said that at this point in time, he's interested and uh, just take the meeting and present the idea. So that's what I've done. Kurt? That list that, that we've seen so far uh, isn't, again, correct. I should be on the list and it's not on that list. Uh, so counting on the county again. We yeah, have, we well, that's problem. why you hire somebody to, to certify them. I mean, well, that's well. How do they certify when they get the information? From well, the well, uh, uh, that reminds me of, uh, of the, the last meeting. You uh, promised to send forward the email that you received from the county with the list that that you provided to these workers who were sending it out, so the staff could uh, try to compare that to what was coming back in. I, I still haven't seen that email. Let me show you what I sent out. That was on December 5th, the day after the December 4th meeting. I sent it to Julie. Uh, if you'll okay, notice. Well, I, I'd ask you to forward that to everyone. So could you please forward that? No, to I me? won't. If you want yours, uh, Julie, <laughs> Julie uh, can ask that uh, Lori Grammer. Uh, it was listed as private information to me and uh, for my usage. Uh, and if she wants to uh, forward it to the rest of the people, that's fine. But I, I. Uh, forwarded this to Julie because she supposedly already had it and I did that on December 5th and I think if you went back and looked through your records I have you, I bet I received one email from you and that's not it I, well, it has not uh, come go back and check that service. time because it, it said sent and if it didn't send it then then I'm not going to do it again so since, uh, since, uh, since we've been discussing this in local public meetings now public record I'm going to provide this to the public records officer I'd ask you to please check your email. I'm trying to, Blake. Yeah. <laughs> Forward that to everyone in the control group email list. Mr. Cook. Okay, Blake Crook, 431 North Shore. As far as proof goes, these people are getting their information from their tax statements. Why don't they provide tax statements, which is going to give you everything, except for that one year? where the irrigation district had to be figured in because it wasn't listed separately by the county, but still can be figured in because I called the county to find out how to do what I needed to do. But that would put the burden of proof upon the claimant. They've got the info. They know where they're getting it from. I've got my tax statements. Of course, I'm not claiming it because, but anyway, they, they have their tax statements and they can provide the burden of proof. And you know, it also, if you make it sound simple, it, to me it should have been, but it, it's escalated to a point where it's unbelievable. Uh, I, w I was in attendance when, when, when the whole thing blew up, and, and the advice uh, to just put the thing in a newspaper and go with that, I mean, that's public notification, but it just, it just continues to roll and roll and roll. Rich. My only comment is, um, our staff is able to uh, certify elections without a problem. I mean, we sit right here and watch them. Um, staff actually, one guy sent in eight more ballots than he was entitled to. We were able to take care of that at the meeting without a whole bunch of crap. And so it just surprised me that somehow we can't figure out, we can do it, we can figure out who can vote, we can't figure out how to pay them back. Well, I, I think an effort is being made by everybody to get this thing. I really do, Rich, and and and, and, I, and everybody will eventually be satisfied. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, Julie, can I just make one comment? Just because they, I mean, we we are looking at scenarios where there's property sales. 
we can't just look at stuff and, and have a parcel number written on a piece of paper and go, oh yeah, we owe that to that person. That property may have sold. There's research that's involved naturally, you know, with every single parcel that goes beyond just a dollar amount. I just wanted to offer that out. Yeah. Does it have to be a paid employee? Can you have volunteers that might be willing to work a couple hours a day to help you figure that out? <laughs> Candidly, I think that's a fair problem. Uh, that's, that's, not, that's not a board problem, that's a staff problem. And I think uh, it should fall in staff's hands. I think I just want to expand on what Julie is saying. Land changes hands, and then this time you're trying to get a refund back. Things change, there's corporations, there's estates. There's multi-owners. You've got, I think, putting the burden of proof back on the people to bring their tax statements in to prove it takes a lot of the work off of them. If, you, if you're owed the money and you think so, bring your tax statements. And if you don't have them, go to the assessor's office. You can get copies. One shot, one shot to pull up Katie. Real quick one. Uh, you know, you've got four or 5,000 tax rate payers that are, that are uh, able to vote. You've only had 50 people ask. How tough can that be? Well, there's a bunch of us haven't sent the so thing far. here, Rich, because we don't know what's going to happen. Okay. Well, if you don't ask, Sandy. you don't get. Sandy? I'm Sandy Estes, the rate payer. But as the volunteer part of it, I volunteered along with the other four ladies that helped send that out. We didn't want to be paid. We wanted to volunteer. And we were told we couldn't, by Julie, we couldn't be volunteers. So I would think that would sounds like a great idea and we all wanted to volunteer our hours but we had to be paid for it the problem with the, what you guys did is how the board took action in hiring those and filling those positions they didn't appoint they didn't volunteer it was a hired positions and that's what was stated in the motion Therefore, you fall under me, the manager's direction. And I have to follow all the policies, all labor laws, everything. Well, why didn't that come out the day that motion was made? <coughs> I wasn't here. She, well, Julie was here, and she told me she knew I'm the human it. resource director. Well, she was speaking for you, then, at, when she told the five of us that we should, we should have been hired okay. in a different way. That's true. All right. Well, you told me to. Kim, okay. one more time. Good. Good. Uh, I think Kurt has done everything he possibly can to make it uh, sound like these people that he hired were hired strictly as uh, employees of the agency rather than the way he treats uh, the people that he hired to go out here and do the do the election the same way that he treats uh, the people who go out here and does the uh, uh, Water Quality Institute. Uh, he seems to be able to hire them. Uh, okay, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just say that... Uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me put it. We went to the governor's policy. In it is a, is a respect issue. Let's not let's not get well, per, let's not get personal. These things we can handle in, okay. in other settings, but uh, these can, things should can, be handled in other settings. I, I've got uh, three letters in here that uh, need to be addressed tonight. Uh, so I don't know if this is the right time. Well, to it's, it's it nine fifteen. I'm about ready to tend yeah. to the table the rest of this agenda. <laughs> you well, uh, then we can go forever. So, but uh, nevertheless, I think these people need to have. And, and uh, he's actually turned around after I. I, I, I let them okay. go on yeah. the right. no, 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 no. We, that, That's what we don't want to go. We don't want to go back in that direction. Oh, okay. we don't, and we will in the proper setting, guys. Okay. We will in the proper I'm setting. Just, I'm just saying, right. but, uh, okay. I, I let these people go on the 11th. Okay. He turned around and fired them on the 18th. Right. And that's, that's okay, not right. That's, that's good. We got, we got that out the way. All right. Well, uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> Where the heck are we? What's the motion on the floor? Uh, there's no motion on the floor. Which agenda item was I on? You're ready for change. 
I was on G. Well, I'm ready for G, huh? Uh, Director Hansen's reimbursement request for personal funds spent on mass uh, mailing. I'm going to table that. Any problems? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed. Uh, mobile home for Conley Park. I'm going to table that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes or no? Oh, nays. Nay. Uh, motion passed. Uh, professional transcription verbatim of minutes. Discussion on that. Yeah, I have a lady that I've talked with on several occasions now. She's uh, here this evening observing the meeting. She has uh, discussed the possibility of transcribing the minutes for us. Um, she currently does that for a medical outfit somewhere out of the Midwest. And so she's, um, she's very adept and very well trained in, in doing this sort of thing. I've known her for a number of years. She was my office manager. 10 years back for about 12 or 13 years, and uh, she did a great job. I was very pleased with her in all those years that she worked for me. So have I. I've got a lady here that I've known for years. She's my neighbor and friends when I've been to. Well, in light of the fact that you have months and months and months of back minutes, it would appear that you hire what I'm going to call a court recorder to listen to the stuff, get it done, you pay so much an hour, you give them a time limit, they would got to have it done by this, you know, whenever, you really get it done. You're preaching to the choir on that one. We have to have, we have to have those minutes and we have to have them as quick as we possibly can. Somebody that's because impartial and no relation. Exactly. And, and it's got to be verbatim minutes and it's going to cost us and I realize that, but those, there's a time limitation on that that this public disclosure uh, act is good, but that's, you got to adhere to, or there's going to be penalties and blah, 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 blah. We need the minutes because maybe everything I'm doing tonight is academic. I don't know. So, uh, Rich? My, Rich Archer, 223 Sharon Avenue. Uh, my only comment is uh, we're verbatim. I mean, this meeting tonight, if you had to put in every single thing that everybody talked about, I think you meet more need to de determine what was uh, established at the end and uh, go more on that and try to figure out what everybody's purpose was what they wanted to say i did a million interviews when i worked and i did five hour interviews and we had people transcribing those tapes and they were on my desk when i went to work that afternoon and they were ver verbatim because they had to be verbatim uh, uh can be done nice. jerry well there's so many right there well, Mr. Heiner can correct me, but you know, think about corporate minutes. They have a motion was made for this resolution. There was discussion, and then it was passed. Uh, maybe somebody, somebody for, somebody against. But they don't have to forbid. We're not trying to prepare a transcript for use in court, subject to cross examination by some sneaky lawyer. And we just need, like Rich says. Uh, what was brought up, what was discussed, not necessarily what was said for or against. Right. Uh, you don't need, I mean, you look at a transcript, you look at a $25 a page practically because people try to transcribe from recordings. People mumble, I don't talk that clearly. What did this person say? All you need is a very clearly stated motion, you know, motion made, seconded, and discussed, and then voted on. That's all you need. Can I get an opinion? Verbatim transcriptions of the meetings are not required. Minutes uh, could be argued or not required. Obviously, the only way you can tell what you've done in the past is by having minutes. The minutes, at the very least, uh, as the gentleman just said, have to include all of the actions taken. Uh, they do not have to be verbatim, but in this instance, unless you've got notes on which you can rely, somebody's going to have to listen to all those tapes anyway in order to create the minutes to to uh, reflect the actions that were taken. 
Bill. And I, I agree that going on, you know, they don't need to be verbatim. But because in the past they're so convoluted, I don't think there's anybody in here that, or that I know that I would trust individually to try and decipher what really was decided and not. And I think what's going to have to happen, you get the transcription and then somebody, the board is going to sit down and say, yeah, we did this or we didn't. I would suggest that whoever does the minutes and can be directed as they're doing the minutes and they're keeping track of the uh, actions that are taken, provide a notation as to the time on the tape at which the action is taken. So if there's a disagreement over what the action was, then the board members can go back to that point on the tape where the person is uh, uh, listening and listen for themselves. And for that matter, let all the audience hear uh, exactly what occurred on that tape. And that would probably save uh, the district time and money by avoiding the cost of a full verbatim uh, transcription, but also provide uh, assurance that uh, it's accurately being done and it would simplify the task of people who, who didn't remember it that way. So, that's an option. And the fact that they, do they have to be do they have to be approved? I, uh, <coughs> the board should adopt its minutes formally because then that will be the record of the board's actions for historical purposes. I'm caught between two attorneys. Can we get to talk again? Jerry, yeah, go ahead. One more time because we respect your opinion. <laughs> well, the court system used to, I suppose they still do, have a software called, you know, for the record. And you could go like in the family court and say, I want a, a the disc that has the, uh, the audio of what happened at a hearing or at a trial, and then you can take that to your court reporter to get a transcription or just listen to it. Mm -hmm. So if those could be made available, and for all these months, that it, it might take a disc for each one of these, uh, if they could be available to the public and have the uh, proposed uh, short and to the point uh, minutes that says here's what the motion was it was discussed and passed or denied or tabled or something like that and then if people could have available to them uh, these discs I maybe mean, buy them you know, a dollar a piece you know, they're not very expensive uh, and then they could go back and take a note and see if yes I agree that's what was said or no I disagree then have an objection period Can we just direct staff to well, get it done and, 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 and the, and the, and the just so yeah. I would suggest that these two individuals, the two that we're speaking of, meet with Julie. Julie knows exactly what has to be done because she's done this for years and years and years. Let's see what the, the individuals would do the job for. See if they're still interested after being at tonight's meeting. And uh, uh, you know, they may have changed their mind. Well, they stayed. That, that's a that's an well, right. that's, Maybe they were two individuals. Maybe you're talking about Gail and Sharon. And, Sharon. and, Sharon. and they, they may have been. <laughs> they may have been embarrassed to get up and walk out in front of all of us. <laughs> you know, but the point of it is, let's let's have them meet with Julie, and then the recommendation would then go to Kurt, and Kurt would make the hire. How's that? Yeah. That sounds great to me. Okay. Let's just good. get it done. Get it done. Yes. So just get it done. I'm sorry. Just a quick comment. I think all of them have been video recorded too. They have. There's no doubt in my mind. I mean it, it, <laughs> <laughs> really yeah, they, they, they they going out on the air. Too. Them, and if it comes down to it, you got a videotape. Sure, do we okay on that? <laughs> so you give me directions. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. A directive. I, I think it was a motion, wasn't there? And I don't think we need to make a motion, do we? Just a directive. It was a directive. Yeah. From the yeah. chairman of the board. It, 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 it never worked before, but <laughs> maybe it will now. It's going to work this time. <laughs> well, uh, maybe we should be more specific exactly what the, the directive, as I heard it, was that they would talk to the two. Uh, candidates, I would say, for the job of creating the minutes and uh, then present to the board uh, essentially proposals by those two persons for that 
Actually, I was going to let it happen within the staff itself. He's our human resources uh, manager. So, you know, instead of taking that extra step, I thought that was adequate. Well, I, I didn't hear it that way, so that's why I wanted to make my, only, my only comment... I'm going to bring you back up here. <laughs> my only comment, there's a lot to be done. You might take and split it in half. How about we let staff worry about it? Yeah. Huh? That's your job. Uh, yeah. Not Thank you. Uh, here, here. <laughs> we'll, we'll just let staff worry about it. An executive decision right there. <laughs> and it will get done. Uh, Lakeside cleanup, March the 23rd, 2013. That sounds great. Is that something you want to elaborate on, Julie? No, we just were, we usually have Lakeshore cleanup the last Saturday of March, but it's Easter weekend. Easter's early this year, so we didn't want to conflict with the Easter weekend, so we moved it back a little bit, be a little colder, maybe a little muddier, but we, we have faithful volunteers. Uh, March 23rd. And the kids fishing derby. Go ahead, Brent. I would move to reestablish the kids fishing derby. I think it was a great opportunity for the youngsters in our community to get involved, and it's different than the city puts on. Um, there's uh, different stations that the kids can go to. They learn different things about water safety issues with regard to uh, fishing and and um, all kinds of things. So I think it's just a. a, a a good thing to offer our community. So it's in a form of a motion. I, I will second it. Uh, and I like the discussion. <laughs> I want discussion too because what it creates for me with this kids fishing derby is future competition with professional fishing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's a great okay. thing. It comes like heights instead. I, I don't know if there's any money budgeted for this. There was not money budgeted last year. Uh, and there hadn't been money budgeted for a number of years for it. Uh, for some reason, it didn't happen last year because they said we cut the budget, but it was never in the budget. So I don't know if, if there's any money for it or uh, where that comes from. I'm all for it. I was for it last year. But, uh, you made a motion to remove it. Mr. Hanson removed it from the budget last year. Okay, it was in the past year before, so if we haven't done without it for years, just one year. One year. Well, okay. All right. All right. But we're going to have it this year, Rich. I hope to. The motion says we reinstate it. And do you second the motion? Call for the question. I call for the question. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. The kids are back. Uh, motion passes. <laughs> Water Quality, Quality Institute. I don't know, it's impressive. I saw that too. But, uh, can go we ahead. From Kurt on this. Yeah, I, I didn't know who to query. Um, hopefully, we can reinstate the institute and get um, educators back involved with it. It, it uh, provides. Uh, for the high schoolers, it provides four days. And middle school, I think we had two two days, and elementary we had one day. But each one has a little different uh, exposure to water quality testing, um, how to be a good steward of, of water, and why. And they they go through the labs, they go through out on the lake, they do the testing, um, and at the end. The middle schoolers and high school have put together a PowerPoint presentations with all of their data. We've used it in the past from high school, um, along with our testing, to see how it matches up uh, with the water quality. Um, I don't know at this point that I have educators that are willing to do it, but I would like to reinstate it and try and get the program uh, going again. And then your budget already? but not specifically as far as these two spelled out. Any comments, Sandy? The educators you're talking about, <coughs> are, are those teachers? Is this on their time? Are they in as volunteers? Are they paid? Consultants <laughs> that come in that are paid. That are paid? Yeah, they feed science and have to be water quality certified. What if that was put on hold till 214? 
and get caught up on some of our other things on the budget. It, we missed it last year. Another year, I don't think, would make that much difference. Okay. Appreciate that, Jim. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer. I'll, I'll Panorama Drive. I'm a retired teacher from the high school, and I saw the benefits of that program firsthand, and it's an excellent program. I wouldn't suggest putting it off for another year. It was a tragedy it got uh, taken out of the budget last year. It, it wasn't taken out of the budget. It was cut in half. Uh, I noticed that we had educators that uh, worked I'm assuming it looks like about seven or eight days. Uh, they were compensated eleven, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. Uh, and I just thought that was pretty excessive for teachers to be paid that kind of money uh, for this type of a training. And I think it needs to be looked at. And so uh, Kurt's own wife, I think, was maybe even one of them uh, that was paid that kind of money. Okay. Uh, I got a motion before. Let me. Let me. Uh, I said I still need to satisfy. You've got it in your budget. You've got the money in your budget. How you how you use that in that particular second of the budget is up to you, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I have to ask you where did the motion come from? I don't know. Did we get a motion? No. <laughs> okay, we got no motion. <laughs> All right, let's get some motion then. <laughs> <laughs> and the best way that uh, the best way I can handle this one again is how many have I tabled? I can table how many? Three. I got one more. I'm gonna table that one. Any guy? Uh, I'm gonna table the water table. Yeah, I'm gonna table water quality. Any opposition? I will give you a, a yay on that one. Thank you. Resolutions. Awesome. I just have a question. Go, go ahead. Well, I have another point that needs to be brought up, but you don't. There's nothing showing here for comments from the directors. Do you want it now under action items, or are you going to give us some time later, or what? What do you have in mind? Well, what do you want? We talk about our legal representation. I thought we were doing that in the executive. I hope legal representation includes the request to be able to collect the parking. Okay, I'm waiting to do that, do that in executive session. All right. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Well, that is, I, I see. Them. Review of legal counsel. I see. Thank you. Can we ask? Well, can we ask? Why, what what does review of legal counsel mean? I have no idea. If, if it is to discuss the the, the district's strategy or position to be taken by the governing body during the course of collective bargaining that is proper for executive session pursuant to RCW 42.30.140. Mm -hmm. If it's to review the performance of the district employee, such as an attorney, you know, that's another thing. Attorney, you could do that in executive session also. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. Final action as to uh, any employment by a district attorney or of, a, of a district attorney would have to be an open session. Can I ask Harold one question? Did you want this in executive session or do you want it open? No, I've asked um, for two months. I've been trying to get the issues on collective bargaining before the board and understand elections and all that, but uh, I sent emails. I didn't get the agenda until I showed up tonight, but yeah. I do have the uh, agreements to go through, gentlemen. I think I've emailed one to everyone. Um, do you want it in the executive session? Yes, though? it has to. Yes, it has to. Okay, Norm, one more time. Yeah, I, Norm asked this. I've got a request from, from the board. Uh, I'd like to see you get in touch with the Bureau of Reclamation and uh, sit down and invite some representatives to come to a meeting and discuss what's going to happen with the water coming into the lake. Are they going to do this year-round deal, <coughs> which would be the best alternative for the lake? If the Bureau decides to put running the water in the lake, the lake's going to go right back to where it was. 
I'm aware of that, Norm, and I think, uh, I think there was some discussion during the course of the campaign where it's my belief that we're going to have to form a number of partnerships. Uh, the most prominent one would probably be in the Bureau. And the guy that's shaking his head in front of you to, you, to your right, is the one that's going to help me do that. So uh, we're, we're going to give our dinner to on that. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're right, right. Jeff? Uh, Jeff Powell, 5204 Panorama Drive. Uh, when Mr. Hansen was the chair, he appointed an advisory committee. <clears throat> I would like to know what the status of that advisory committee is now in relationship to you now being the director. We hadn't heard much about the advisory committee. I guess it was kind of a private thing, but you brought out all the names and numbers, but we haven't heard much about it, and I would like to know what's the status of this advisory committee that I've never seen. As I understand the governance, uh, any director or the, or the manager can have uh, any kind of unpaid committee they want. They just can't make decisions. I, but, uh, let, let me, where, you, where are you going with yours? Well, uh, it was a one-year committee, and it was for the chairman. And it was a one-year committee, and it ended, uh, according to the resolution that was passed for it, it ended at the end of the of my term, as far as chairman. So uh, we don't have an advisory. You, you don't have one, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, if Ken wants to, agree, probably not. The, yeah, there. probably not. Well, what heck, we've deviated all night. I, I was thinking, Jeff, would probably a, a good idea. I think a citizen advisory committee is a necessary, necessary thing, and I'd like to see its members consist of. Uh, uh, each director selects two people, and, and so that would give us ten because we're going to have five directors on this board as quick as I can make it, or we can make it possible, uh, and management uh, name two. Uh, so a 12-man advisory board that met once a week and, and simply did that advice. <coughs> well, I'm not opposed to you guys having advisory people. I think that's a good yeah. idea. It's just that if you're going to have advisory people, <coughs> I think that us people here in the audience should know who the advisory people are and what they're advising you on. Certainly. <coughs> Certainly. And I think one of the requirements, of course the rules will have to be written, but the, one of the requirements would be that the a representative from the board would be here on the given night to, to state the current status. Right, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, didn't mean to. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, Dennis Clay, and I'm in the district at 9029 McConnell, and there's three of us that's put comments down that we wanted to talk. Two of the others have already been addressed, but I have three items that haven't been addressed yet. And I'm really glad that you give me 30 minutes per item. <laughs> <laughs> and I can fill it. What would you address, Dennis? <laughs> Isn't it great to hear everybody laughing? And laughing? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, the first thing is uh, is the sign-up sheet. I like what you said earlier about having at the beginning saying, "Is there anybody would like to you have something addition added to the agenda?" I think that's great. So, and you, I really commend you for allowing the comments, short comments from the audience. That everything flows really well uh, when you have somebody say something, and you might instead of saying let the people stand up for three minutes or just say I agree, you might say how many people agree and they can raise their hand and get the same same effect. Yeah. But it's really nice to get to have that. Uh, but if you have even when something comes up during the meeting, maybe there can be another way to get a little slip of paper up here or something to say, could you add this item to it also? You can always say no, we'll wait till next week, next month. Is somebody taking notes for no, no, really. well, I'm, I'm speaking, serious. I'm speaking to the microphone. Like you and it might be transcribed next year. <laughs> the second thing is a little off the subject that we have here tonight, but as the uh, president of the Job Corps Community uh -huh. Relations Committee, I'd like to invite the board members to attend every month and the rest of the staff. I'd like to see somebody maybe bring a different staff every month. That staff member to go to the job corps. Uh, if we provided you with email addresses, would you see that we're notified? Yes, Julie gets them every. It's every other month that we have a meeting. But I, you've been to them as mayor, but I don't know that you've ever been to them recently. Them. It's a free meal. Actually, actually, yeah, it's going to kick in to be. They have to start charging three dollars. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll follow up on that. Uh, number three, uh, I was had the pleasure of being the um, inspector for the last election, and I'm very really proud, and I appreciate you guys having faith in me to do that. When we opened, when we had an envelope that I considered to be good, a uh, valid envelope, it was opened, and then the envelope at that point is trash, and the ballot goes in another stack. Those envelopes, now we're not talking about the, the invalid that we, I declared invalid, we're talking about the valid envelopes. And they, once those are open, they go in the trash. The board requested that those envelopes be saved. Those envelopes were saved, they're still on the property, but they were never locked down. They weren't required to be. So at this meeting, I'm asking that the board vote and have those envelopes destroyed. There's no reason to have them. Yeah. Any problems with that, Julie? Any We've estimate? never kept them in the past. They're just the well, man. We burned them anyway. last time when I was involved. Right. And I just I requested they be kept by the staff because the board requested it. It is so not a requirement to keep them. No. And we did burn them last year. But the year I suggest involved. you do the same thing as soon as possible. There's no reason to have them. Well, I, I would still like to have a list of who they came from and this kind of thing. I don't know if this is a... Uh, These are the unmarked ballots that have nothing on them. It's on it's, it's, it's blank stuff. Oh, you're, t you're talking about the ballots that got thrown in the box that were never counted? <laughs> no, no, no. Just no. Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. talking, I thought you were talking about no, the... When, when, when we have, when we pull out one of the envelopes and we determine it to be a valid envelope, by that you're talking about the one that came in the mail to <laughs> Correct. Okay. They were opened. You were standing here while right. we opened all those envelopes and put right. the envelopes and actually yeah. we threw them in a box. Right. And we put the ba ballots here. They would be determined to be valid or invalid later. But all the envelopes that were considered to be valid went into a box. And that's really trash. So those should be yeah. done away with. Well, uh, my feeling is this might be a way that we could actually look at who the people are that they're without having to break into the seal of the of the ballots. But there's no, nothing, no, there's blank nothing envelope. on them. Huh? There, there is an envelope, envelope that we the the envelope already the turned the was in. It's just got the instructions on it. That's it. Oh you're talking about the uh, the blank okay. The well, ones, with, the the ones with the instructions on it yeah. that the yeah. board yeah. said yeah. Okay, I, so you're not referring to the ones that were shipped, the shipping containers or them. Didn't we save them? Anyone that's considered an invalid ballot or uh, an invalid envelope, we kept aside. Those are kept under lock and key. Okay. Those you still have for six months at least. Right. Okay. The other ones are just trash. They've always been burned right. the next day or day yeah. after. But, uh, but I guess what has happened to the envelopes that we told those you are to under, save? Those are under lock, lock and key. key. The ones that uh, actually the containers that were sh they were shipped in? Now, what, what are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about the envelopes that have the mailing address, the stamps on them, all those things. Those, were, those, are, those are trash also. Well, they... Yeah, if they were considered invalid, we kept everything. They're all kept there. But if, they, if, if it's, you open it up, it's got all the corporate information mm -hmm. and the yeah, yeah. driver's license and all that stuff, and all that's set over here as valid, and the ballots are stacked up as valid, that envelope they came in is tossed. That's not needed anymore because it's a valid, those are all valid ballots at oh, that I, point, I, all I, valid I, envelopes. I, I know we open that from. up and there may be an invalid ballot inside. It, for instance, maybe both people are marked, that's invalid. Maybe nobody's marked, that's invalid. Yeah, I, I, I would, if it's still available and if we still have them, the shipping containers, uh, whether it be an envelope or a box or whatever, if those are still available, I'd like to see them uh, not be destroyed. There's really no reason to keep them. Well, uh, other than the fact that they're under lock and key. Do they have anybody's name on them? Some of them do. And some of them don't. Well, the ones that do might be, the, there might have been a whole bunch of envelopes inside, right. all proper, and they've got the name. Well, they've got their return addresses probably right. on almost every one of them. I mean, I would think. Mm -hmm. uh, which, well, now how long do you want to keep them here? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like to have the ability to uh, to look at them. And whether well, I couldn't be, guarantee you they're all there because they have been under lock and key because it's not required. Well, uh, then then they should be to where they could actually oh. be. 
we fought, we, I followed the law. Okay, well, I'm not saying you haven't. I know. I'm just saying that before we burn them, uh, we have got questions. What, what are you going to? Where's this going to? Though? Are you yeah. contesting it or what? Well, I'm, I'm just saying it's a source of information here that we're yeah, trying right to destroy. All okay. Stuff. All right. You, you had your say. Okay. Yeah. I think there's a certain infringement upon the rights of the rate payers uh, when we start uh, rifling through a box of envelopes to see who voted and and who didn't vote. I think that uh, we need to guarantee the rate payers. Uh, uh, anonymity here, and I'm not at all in favor of allowing anybody to go through those. Well, I think very public information. Very in line. I, I think because the issue has been raised, they should be preserved. If I if assign the task, I can research whether or not they should continue to be preserved. There is a stat, there is there is a right in the state of Washington to a secret ballot. Uh, uh, Dr. Kofi is right about that. I don't know how that plays into the uh, envelopes that we're talking about. But it's something that we want to look at. One thing, one more thing. We determined during the election process that we couldn't even mention names. We couldn't say names out loud. So why are we even preserving an envelope with the name on it? Well, if there's a discrepancy, it seems like until that's settled, everything should be. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I'll find out. It's up to the board, I think. Well, it's not. Why the hell else do you want It doesn't matter. In my estimation, it's no, it's no big thing, Dennis, but keep the dog on things and yeah. until you're out of a contested period, so you can't be challenged on so any of this stuff. The question is do you want the staff to put them under lock and key now? Yeah. Sure. Tonight? Why not? <laughs> Can you have room to do that? They're locked up. They're locked oh, up. I thought you said they weren't. They're locked up. Okay. Where? <laughs> okay. <laughs> put that, put that back there. <laughs> now you're out of order over there. <laughs> yeah. Who's got the keys? Uh, okay. Well, Dennis, thank That's you very it. much. You That's all I needed at the last moment. <laughs> 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 Mary. Has there been a written complaint about some indiscret you know, some problems no, with uh, no. Are we just Not dealing with rumors? Yeah. Are we just kind okay. of riding the turbulence through? One thing, please don't forget tonight, you don't have a secretary. You may be getting a transcriptionist, but you might want well, to lay out a plan of action here. <coughs> Well, we're not we're not whispering because we don't want you to hear. Uh, I just don't want you. I don't want you to forget that. That's basically a personnel matter. You should. That's that's what we just said. That's what we just said. Yeah. That's. that's I just want it on the radar screen. That's here. But I. Is there any way we can get these minutes tonight transferred <coughs> for approval of next month? Well, we'll do it by next month. We'll definitely try. We'll, 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 would you do that? Would you please try? Yeah, that's very important. That's paramount. We've got to get those minutes, guys. We've got to get those minutes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, a question. Mike Smith, 136764. I am a rate there. My question is this. We're taking recorded minutes at every meeting. Why do we need, the lawyer told you that that was suitable. We don't have to go out and do all the transcribing of these minutes. Yeah. You, you, don't, you don't have to do a transcription, but you should definitely do minutes. But they're if, different. If someone requests minutes can't you give them the recording of the meeting with the recording the recording is not minutes yeah they would have to if they to request recording. if they request the recording they would be entitled to a copy of the recording yes but separate separate from the recording which certainly is the best evidence what happened 
the board should have official minutes adopted that reflects its actions on paper so they can go back in the future instead of running through hundreds of hours of audio recordings and look at the minutes to say this is what we did on such and such a date. Okay, hey folks. I didn't mean to keep you. It's almost 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. The agenda was number one, you break in a rookie, and I apologize for that. <laughs> and number two, the, the agenda was pretty, well, two agendas were pretty strong tonight, or uh, pretty lengthy. So we're going to try to cut these meetings down a lot shorter and get more, a lot more done. Come back next time and, and, uh, uh, and, and thank you for coming. Here, for, I have for, to announce what? Oh, I have to announce. I'm sorry. I have to go to resolutions. None. Executive session. Oh, I have to announce that we're going to go into executive session for, for the review of legal counsel. Well, actually, it was for the uh, discussion <laughs> relating to the inter uh, planning or adopting a strategy or position to be taken by the governing body, that's you guys, the board, during the course of collective bargaining. Pursuant to RCW 42.30.140, you're also obligated under uh, the statute to estimate the time that you think it will take. So I guess Mr. Moberg would be probably the best one to estimate that time. And I thought that's what I said. <laughs> I, was, I was reading between the lines. Simple English. I got a collective bargain agreement. I sent you a copy. I'd like to review. Thank you. Uh, yeah. You got to decide how much time you want to spend. No wonder attorneys time. make so much but just billables. Go, oh. David. Also, do you anticipate taking any action when you read anything from executive session? Right. Possibly. Uh, possibly. Is that possible? Possibly. And, and one other on, thing. On how long? Uh, I don't know how long does it take, guys. I'll give them an hour. One hour, Dave? An hour? That's if we don't I'm need doing. it, we don't have to use it, we can come back to it. Okay. And one thing I do want to say, uh, I, I apologize for the, for the, for the fact that the, the issue of a special election for the two commissioners was not on this agenda. It will be on next month's agenda. <coughs>